Hi, welcome along to a little video on helping you understand the wave model of light and uh, yeah, how we consider light to work. Classic image to get us started. We've got white light coming in here. Uh, it's refracted, something we'll do uh, quite a bit later on. You can see the different colours have been refracted by different amounts. and We've separated our light into what we call a spectrum. Uh, I'm sure you've heard of the electromagnetic spectrum going all the way from red through blue. Um, in terms of this video, what's changing along here is that the red light here has got a long wavelength or longer wavelength. And then around here, the blue light has got a shorter wavelength. You've already met that idea before um, that colours are determined by wavelength. What about brightness? You can kind of imagine little feeble old torch producing a small amount of light kind of this is some modern led powered monster so bright you can barely bear to look at it how is the light different between here and here in terms of the wave model of light well this this is carrying the waves here are transferring more energy than here so we say these waves have got a larger amplitude so if that wave represents bright light, this wave represents less bright light. If this wave represents blue white light, this wave represents red light because it's got a longer wavelength. We're just going to stick in a bit of maths now. Um, very important equation, C equals F lambda. I don't think there's anything difficult about this equation other than the fact that we've got some letters that don't quite seem to stand for the right thing. F is frequency. That's measured in hertz. Lambda, that's a Greek letter, is wavelength. Um, and that's measured in metres. And this is the wave speed basically we haven't got um we, we want to kind of not use v or, or or s for speed or velocity here so we're reduced to using um c for wave speed and that's in meters per second in terms of the work we're doing at the moment the entire electromagnetic spectrum that's all the way through gamma rays and x-rays ultraviolet light visible light infrared microwaves radio waves they all have the same speed they all travel at three times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Another thing to notice, because for the electromagnetic spectrum, the frequency times the wavelength is a constant number. Um, if we make the wavelength longer, go back here, so if this is red and this is blue, if we make the wavelength into a larger number, this has got to be a smaller number. So if we go back up here, because we, these are long wavelength, these are lower frequency. And that's going to be kind of really crucial. We get our head around that in the next video. Uh, and these, because it's a shorter wavelength, are going to be higher frequency. Let's go back to the maths at the bottom there just for a moment. So a typical calculation we might need to do. So we might be told that the um, wavelength of light is, say, 500 nanometers. It's really worth knowing that the visible part of light goes from blue light at 400 nanometers to red light at about 700 nanometers. And it doesn't say officially anywhere in the specification that you need to know that. I find it incredibly useful. So we're taking 500 nanometers clearly in the visible range. And we're going to ask ourselves the question, what frequency um, must this light have? So frequency is equal to C over lambda. So we've got three times 10 to the eight divided by 500. Can you remember what the N is? We've had a video on this. Need to know these off by heart. Yeah, times 10 to the minus nine. So I'll just stick that in the calculator. Can be quite a useful opportunity just to remind you use this fraction button here and the um, power 10 button down there 
So um, on the top we had 3x8, on the bottom we've got 500x minus 9. X was the old name for that button times 10 to the power. And that gives us 6 times 10 to the 14 hertz. Really very big number. That's the number of waves passing per second or the number of oscillations per second. 